Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Shri Ayer. The heat of the moment. The Lok Sabha elections are heating up and a lot of stuff that is coming across. I just picked a few salient features to share with you guys because some of you may not be following what is happening in individual constituencies and as well as in different states. So we're going to be talking about two big incidents and a few other incidents. So uh, first of all, it took us a lot of time to put together all these things. So we would really appreciate it. That is me and my team would appreciate it if you can like this video as well as if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel. First thing is what is happening in Coimbatore? Well, there is this one DMK pollster. I mean, he has been somebody who has been polling for DMK for several years, like the 20 plus years. Now, what happened was that he was going to come out with a survey of the Coimbatore constituency. And his survey did not mean good news for DMK. You know what they did? They sent the police to try and tell this guy that he can no longer publish the survey results. Although electioneering is going to stop only on the 17th, 48 hours before the election starts or 36 hours, something like that. So why did the police invent a new excuse to try and deter him from publishing the results? Well, they tried, they did, could not succeed and he did come out with his numbers. The link to this particular tweet where he is talking about this is given in the description section. So you do, um, you can get that information. But basically, I'll tell it to you what he said. He said that Annamalai is winning Coimbatore by a margin of over 1 lakh votes. You can see the picture there that uh, uh, of, of the guy being stopped by the police. And he, according to his findings, he said Annamalai is getting 38.9% of the vote. The DMK candidate is getting 33%. There is the money power. This will tell you, till two days ago, DMK was nowhere in the picture. The ADMK guy is getting like 13%. Some other independent person is getting 6%. And then ityadi, ityadi, etc. is after that. So what this tells you is DMK has an enormous amount of confidence in its money power, thinking that using money, they can buy the votes. Coimbatore has a small amount of Muslim population uh, that is, uh, you know, in this constituency, place called Ukkadam. But I don't think that's going to sway the needle here as much as established, you know, uh, muscle memory for the two signs, that is two leaves of ADMK and a rising sun of uh, DMK. Now, the, the takeaway here is, is this thing true or not? Well, that same DMK poster who usually you know, ups the DMK numbers is what people say because, I mean, they basically DMK commissioned him for the longest time. He said, I am staking my reputation on this. If I'm proved wrong, I will not do surveying anymore. So he's pretty confident. He's also a lawyer. So he could successfully argue his way out of the blockade that the police was putting on him. So Coimbatore anomaly appears to be winning. Again, I don't want to count uh, you know, anyone to start celebrating yet. They're, these people are past masters at swaying elections one way or the other. This is one. There is another incident that took place in a uh, constituency near Kumbakonam. Uh, I think it was Tanjavur constituency, I think. So Tanjavur, Kumbakonam, these are all adju uh, adju adjacent, not very far cities from here, each other. So I don't know the exact place. I thought it was Kumbakonam, but People are now saying it is actually Tanjavur constituency. Whatever it is, there is a uh, Vedic Pandit. His name is Sita Raman. And I just put out a tweet. I'd like the tweet to be brought up, please. Okay. So a Vedic teacher, Sri Sita Raman, was assaulted by two Dravida party members. And he said that first they, they were arguing between each other. Oh, we just are supposed to warn. The other guy said, no, no. We'll beat him up. And they actually beat him up. They dragged him into a forest and they threw him there in the forest and came. And all this, all this because this gentleman in a WhatsApp group was uh, criticizing the performance of the ruling DMK government. He also says, I mean, if you follow this link and if you watch uh, the video and if you can follow Tamar, he says, the people who dragged me, they looked well-built, muscled. I'm not, 
uh, I won't be surprised if they are actually belonging to the police. So what is the police up to here? We know, I told you this, that uh, in Telangana, the BRS government was uh, spying or, or listening in on 2,50,000 phone accounts, phone numbers, cell phones. And once that government went out, many intelligence officers have been arrested. Except the top guy is hiding in the United States. I know his name. I don't want to mention it here. I mean, what does it? What difference does it make? They, if the guy has fled uh, for U.S., I'm sure he'll find a way to try and stay in the United States. Anyway, it's up to the government to pull him back in. We'll wait and see how that plays out. So these things are happening on one side. Now, for the big moment now, I hope you all have liked this video. A lot of people are tuning in, so I'm very happy about that. Let's take a quick look at this slide deck. A case of Mahua Maitra and Jay. Jay, uh, I don't remember his full name, Dehatrai, I think. So he is a Supreme Court lawyer. And uh, he and Mahua Maitra were in a relationship. Then they fell out. Over what? Over a dog. Their dog's name is Henry. Each wanted to keep the custody of the dog. You've seen this thing play out. I think I had a monologue or maybe an episode. I don't remember exactly. I've had this monologue. Now, in, in part of, as part of this uh, tweeting back and forth between the two, there was one sensational claim that Jay made. Next slide, please. Um, he said that he saw Shashi Tharoor um, trying to molest a lady in a Taj hotel. And he said, I and Mahua Maitra were witness to this incident. Now, what happened was that Karan Thapar, this Jay, Jay saying Karan Thapar is a twisted and corrupt monster. The suave and articulate exterior is a scam. Went out of his way to protect dirty Tharoor from me in the hotel molestation incident on of 11th October 2022 rather than supporting the uh, victim. Latian's filth is astounding. Uh, by the way, I have seen Mr. Tharoor here and there and every sighting he has a new girl on his arm. So you make your own conclusion. Go back to the previous slide, please. Previous one, please. There are many such pictures and I'm just showing you the picture. I'm not connecting any dots here. So that is Mahua Maitra in case you don't know. She's again contesting on a TMC ticket. Interestingly, I thought there was a lot of uh, friction between uh, Mahua and Mamta, but looks like all that has been papered over. So anyway, let's go skip two slides. Okay, so here, this is, I think this looks like a, a tweet from, I'm not sure who it is, but because it, I thought, first of all, this was Karan explaining it, but it may not be Karan, it might be somebody else. He says, Jay, since you won't talk to me, I thought I would text to say, if you go public, you will harm and perhaps even ruin XYZ's reputation and political career. But it really won't affect Shashi because he is going to lose the election and you have told me he has behaved like this many times before. So I presume people know he does it. You insanely then... Why do something that could ruin her? Think carefully about this. At least, oh, okay. So this is Karan Tapar saying him. And, and so there are some hints here. He says that uh, it, will, uh, it will ruin her reputation and political career. So that means the said lady that he was trying to molest was a politician, woman politician. And I, I don't know beyond that. So this is the guy trying to bat for Sashi Tharoor. Next slide, please. Jay is not done. He says, the only travesty uh, is the fraud Shashi Tharoor has been perpetuating on the public. Does this sudden support for Moitra have something to do with what he did at the Taj Chambers last year in October? This is 2023, okay? This hot air balloon is unusually silent. Why? Next one. Shashi Tharoor is trying to cozy up to BJP Prime Minister to protect himself. To be clear, what he needs protection from is, has nothing to do with Sonanda's case. Shashi knows what I am talking about, his dirty, dark and terribly twisted secret. Well, you know how this whole Sonanda thing flared up, right? Uh, 
lady journalist by the name of Meher Tarar. And, and he and Shashi Taru allegedly spent three days in Dubai. And Sunanda Pushkar had a lot of contacts. She lived in Dubai for several years. So all her friends started calling up and said, what is this I'm seeing? Shashi Tarur is going around the whole place painting the town red with this, this lady. Now, Meher Tarar is an interesting character. She has been associated with, uh, there's a guy called Dullat, if I remember correct. Uh, he was an intelligence person. I think he might have been raw director too. Dullat was also, you know, mentioned with her. And so is Mr. Manish Tiwari. I don't know how many of these people are going to end up in, in BJP. It's always, you know, I, I laugh when I see that suddenly all these people uh, appear to have been cleansed. This is something that I just can't accept. The BJP doesn't need these people. These are all, anyway, but still they go and, and get them. Now, he also says, Jay Anand Dehatrai, Tashi Tarur is a dirty, twisted old man who was witnessed molesting a lady in, last, in October. This is 2022. He admitted being drunk when this happened. All facts will be revealed at the right time exposing this charlatan. Jay doesn't like Shashi Tarur. That, that, is, that much is clear as to for what reason, we don't know. But this is not the only thing that Shashi Tarur is facing. Some of you may have seen on social media that when he was trying to campaign, People were waving, saying, go back, don't even come here. So basically, whatever treatment it is that the DMK MPs, the Congress MPs are seeing in Tamil Nadu, they are seeing the same kind of stuff happening at um, uh, Kerala also. Kerala goes to polls on the 23rd of April, so it's not far behind. So Tarur has been getting a fair amount of heat. In fact, Tarur has also been warned because he made some out atrocious remarks evidently against uh, um, his uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, his opponent, and and is there any new slides? Okay, so uh, I thought there was a new slide. So Rajiv um, Rajiv Shankar uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar is surging, but again the the difference between the two is what is the Christian vote in that constituency going to do? From what we are hearing. You, you may have seen Bala Gautaman's episode with me and he also said that the Christians are really warming up to the BJP because now they are convinced that whatever they've heard from others is not true. And I mean, that's, that should be the way it is. I mean, BJP never, it, actually no party ever does it intentionally. Uh, I'm sorry, I've talked about the right-wing parties, but you know, uh, they, there's always this painting. So if the Christian vote switches from the UPA to the NDA, then I think Shashi Tharoor's game over because there's a fair percentage of Hindu voters in that constituency. It is the Muslim, the, the Christian vote that was deciding it. And I think that will be ga game over. Again, we, we can't count anything yet, but looks like, looks like Kerala may be getting two seats. Um, that's what a couple of polls have predicted. And in BJP and, and in Tamil Nadu, BJP looks like they may get a uh, handful, maybe five. Uh, although, again, Coimbatore, Tirnal Valley, um, these two look very, very strong. Uh, I think the other things that are surging are Central Chennai against Dayanidhi Maran, uh, Kanyakumari, and uh, also Velur. And there are very good chances that places like... Um, Tirupattur, uh, no, not Tirupattur, Tirupur and, and Krishnagiri might also go the BJP way. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how things play out. Yeah, 66% Hindu votes in Trivandrum. Thank you so much, Raxi boy. So um, that, that is a fairly uh, significant Hindu vote, but, but not every Hindu votes. In fact, Kerala has some of the most uh, an opinionated voters. They, 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 look. People don't vote with their heads. They vote with their emotions. So the last hurtful remark committed by X or Y goes against him or her. And, and this, is, this is how it is in, in India. They don't realize that this is a long race of five years, that whatever it is that people have done, they need to understand and remember what each candidate did, good or bad. You have to do some homework. You have to understand what happened. How did you benefit also? How did the country benefit? How did the state benefit? And personally, how did you benefit? All these three things. And then you vote. At least, you know, 
Tiruvanthapuram uh, uh, elector is uh, is illiterate, so should be should be able to do it. Nilgiris also is an interesting uh, uh, constituency. It is possible that uh, um, BJP could win there too, because what ended up happening there was that there was uh, I, I did this in the morning six o'clock episode. I talked about what happened in Nilgiris. There was a van of a Raja carrying, I think, 19 suitcases, if I remember correctly. And clearly it was money. And uh, when the ECI officer flagged, stopped it, and then saw who was in the vehicle, this person allowed that vehicle to go without checking. And that officer has been since suspended. So the, the, the EC is cracking the web. You, you really should look at that 6 o'clock video that I put out. Lot of statistics. What exactly is being smuggled around for, uh, for the purpose of uh, getting votes? Uh, Sam wants to know what about Madurai? Madurai, Rama Srinivasan is working very, very hard. I mean, these are all in the middle, okay? If the, we don't know, what we don't know is there are two waves. There's an anti-DMK wave and there is a pro-Modi wave. And this pro-Modi, I also add Anamalai. Think of it as a double engine. Now, how many people will come out to vote? Also, the way they're rigged, it's very, very scientific. And, and booth agents have to be very careful. And if they get pushed out, shoved out, especially if BJP booth agents get pushed out, shoved out, they should be ready to immediately complain to ECI because then that particular booth could be countermanded. And if there are five or 10 booths like that, then that entire constituency could be countermanded and repolling conducted again. I, I want these things to happen this time because they will fight tooth and nail. 70 years they have been basking in sunlight here, making money hand over fist. And now one tsunami comes and unseats them. Not only that, they are now scrambling to find their clothes. That's how bad this tsunami is. So they are going to fight. They are going to fight hard. In fact, uh, Anamale claimed that uh, Sabarisan, the son-in-law of Stalin, the man who has the money bags, is actually camped in Coimbatore right now. So we'll know. Just a few days. Any updates on fake EVMs? Um, that part, I, I, I saw that thing happen in near Reni Gunta. I haven't had any update. I will check. And if I find something in the evening program or something like that, in one of the episodes, we will give you an update. Next one. Ramalingam, Namakkal, BJP. Uh, Sam, all these people are good fighters. The overall uh, problem that they have is, see, what happens in the really rural areas is the village headman decides which way the village will vote. And that means you have to go to the village headman. And BJP as a policy appears to be not wanting to spend money, except for the booth agents and, and for the actual work. And that is a principle. I mean, I, I appreciate that. So if the if, if even if the candidate goes and talks to village headman, one headman at a time, will they listen? That is the question. They don't seem to understand the the big picture. That's the problem. Uh, Magna Dranga wants to know: Can A Raja Antura still be investigated? Of course, 19 suitcases being allowed cannot be rectified with suspension of an official. Yes, the money has disappeared into a, a big big hole. But the ECI is coordinatedly finding out a lot of problems and, and acting and clamping down. Um, they, there were some things that were happening. I was uh, getting news that many people are now uh, you know, posted to make sure that the elections are conducted in a free and fair manner. Because the true vote will be only found when nobody gets to uh, you know, uh, get bribe. And, and then vote because they got this money. Uh, Venugopalan wants to know, Tuklak Idaya does not give any seat for BJP and his polls are usually correct. Look, Venugopalan, one of the things about this is that there is a silent uh, revolution also. Uh, many booth, uh, many BJP party workers are being chased away. Okay, chased away. This used to be a problem. And I remember Uma Anandanji, who is a lone BJP corporator in Chennai Corporation, telling me that I don't want to mention the name of this person. This person had come from Udupi to, uh, uh, to take care of a temple in Chennai. 
and it was that person who did door to door canvassing to give the thing saying that please vote for bjp nobody from the local unit of bjp dared to step out that was the problem in uh, in the constituency that she stood for in the mayoral election next uh, vignesh wants to know will vote transfer happen from pmk to bjp i think it will i think it will Pushanand Keshav wants to know what is the update on Chennai Central and South. Central uh, Vinoj is surging. South is still a challenge. Ravi Kumar, why is Kami government not acts for abetting PFI and SDPI? Um, Ravi, there are lots of reasons I can go. What essentially happened was the SR Boma judgment. The yardstick for dismissing state governments went up by a few yards. And therefore, you remember, as soon as the Modi government came into power, they dismissed the Arunachal Pradesh government and then the Supreme Court reinstated it back, citing the Boma judgment. So what would you want? That BJP dismisses the communist government and then they go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court reinstate them, saying that this does not stand to test whatever be the uh, checks that were given in the Boma judgment. So that is one of the reasons why they want this huge mandate so that they can make some changes including tweak the constitutional change that gave the power to Supreme Court to, to be able to countermand some of these uh, dismissals. Kala Raman wants to know. Um, Sir, could you please make a video on how to get the schemes of Modi government like ration, health benefits, the procedure and whom to approach? At least we can guide our maid and others. Um, I think I did this thing like four or five years ago. Uh, Data.gov.in or something like that. DATA.gov.in or something like that. Uh, I will take a look around it. it I'm, I'm, I'm sure our team can find it. Next one. Facts and Fictions wants to know, Sriji, if the BJP wins Tanjavur seat, then the last days of DMK will start because it is the DMK's birthplace. Well, <laughs> DMK's birthplace strictly could be Kanchipuram uh, or Erode because EVR was from Erode and Annanudurai is from Kanchipuram. And, and uh, one of the big things where Chappalki Mala was uh, put in front of, I think, temple. Uh, there was a Rama statue that uh, this guy garlanded with chapels, EVR. Anyway, uh, sad, sad. Let, let's hope that uh, BJP wins as many. See, sometimes TNK, uh, the, the Tamil Nadu voters will vote decisively for one party. I mean, like for example, 2014, overwhelming win for uh, ADMK. 2019, the opposite way. 2024, we were thinking that it could get split. But you never know. You never know. You don't know how angry the electorate is. Kushanan Keshav, sir, are you planning to have an exit poll on April 19th? No, we cannot have an exit poll. Nobody will do an exit poll until June uh, 1st, after the last round of elections. Only then you will have exit polls. Uh, Magnet Ranga wants to know, don't, feel, don't you feel that some of the predictions by the media are actually a wish rather than a fair analysis and the biased media is still giving Raga a lot of publicity. It's very true. Today, there was an interesting um, survey by Chanakya and you know, every metric that he mentioned, the BJP's coalition, that is the NDA, was beating the other two coalitions hands down. And this is essentially survey of the voter by asking the voter questions rather than asking constituency or candidate, they were asking, in your opinion, who do you think is going to win in the entire state of uh, Tamil Nadu? In that, the, the, the voters have said 7% uh, Nam uh, Tamir Katsi, Sebastian Simon, then 19% uh, ADMK, 27% BJP and from 45% DMK. That's what the voters think will win. But this is all, you know, everybody is in a small silo. So I think that that survey is a bit flawed. I said the sampling was close to 7,000 people, 6,000 something, 6, 8, 7, 7 or something like that. I think that survey is a bit flawed. See, when the wave happens, wave cannot be predicted. Absolutely not predicted. 
I don't know how many of you remember. N.T. Ramarao came in a wave like that. Tidal wave. He got two-thirds majority. And then his government got dismissed by Indira Gandhi six, within six months. That's why this uh, government dismissals, then Congress used to do it left, right and center. That's why that thing has got such a bad rap. Next one. Meena Ayer wants to know, Taru has no Mallu background in his upbringing. His record as MP has nothing significant. Rajiv should win this time. At least some improvement in IT sector can be expected. Well, we hope so, Meena ji. Uh, uh, Tarur is more of a, they, you know his nickname, right? Shampoo boy. Um, so it, it, it's a flamboyant character. He likes a good, uh, he likes to live the good life. And he's still a murder accused. And, and I don't know what the deal here is. It is BJP in power. And they still are sitting on that case. I just can't explain some of the things that this BJP government does. I really can't. Next one. N. Chandrasekhar wants to know, BJP should own TV channels like DMK. Even Vijaykanth has its own channel. Yes, Vijaykanth had Captain TV and BJP has a channel called Tamarai TV. It does have a fairly good viewership. Uh, you know, Chandrasekhar, the, you know how they play games? The cable set-top box is controlled by a DMK-owned uh, company. And if you turn on, <laughs> and we are also funny, okay? We turn everything off at night. And when you wake up in the morning and turn the TV on, you turn the set-top uh, box on. So what happens is it resets to one. And one is usually called RSA channel, that is the, the government channel. And every day, I have seen only Stalin's face. Come on that. And then Sun will be two, third, or first to 20 will be all DMK channels. So if you want to go to Tamarai, you have to go to some 165 or something. You have to click on the remote. Remotes don't work well. So it becomes a you know big, big work. Uh, so this is how they play games. Next one. Rasheshwar Mat Rana. Nice. Rasheshwar Mat Rana. Rasheshwar Nath Rana. Sorry, my eyes are not very good today. Will you be getting Annamale on your platform? Well, um, you know, think about it. What do you think I can ask more than what everyone has asked so many times? I've tried, you know, we tried setting it up a couple of times. Somehow his schedule didn't permit it. And then I said, well, if it is meant to be, maybe he'll come when he has accomplished something significant in his life. The channel is always open. I've had even a couple of people standing by to guest host this interview. Because with Annamale, it'll have to be a face-to-face -face interview, not something on online. So it might happen sooner than you think. Next one. Venkata Ramanan wants to know, is it possible that Setu sir to go around Coimbatore villages and sense what is the mood of the people? Um, Setu sir has a full-time job. He's doing this out of passion and uh, it is difficult. You know, Coimbatore is a fairly uh, urban uh, constituency. 83% is urban, 17% is rural. If you start watching JVC Sriram's forecast, the first one to the latest one on Coimbatore, a lot of things have changed. And uh, Annamale has been really heating it up. His latest salvo is the one that is going to really bring him the victory, which is 500 days, 100 promises for Coimbatore. That is going to be something like a game changer because 500 days is still below the date for state assembly elections at Tamil Nadu. So he will be able to, let us say, that he gets elected, he becomes a minister and he starts putting all these things in play and these 100 things that he's promised happen to Coimbatore. Then everybody will be convinced this man is a man with a mission, right? I think that is the plan that BJP has for Annamalai. I don't think they would have thought just like that, let us toss, toss him in the, at the deep end of the pool and see if he can swim. I don't think that was the intention when they fielded him from Coimbatore. They had done their math and I think they were confident that Annamalai would win from Coimbatore. Next one. Rajat SR wants to know, when will Kejriwal resign as CM? I've been telling you this, Rajat, he's going to not resign so easily. He'll go kicking and screaming. The lower court will say he has to resign. Then they'll challenge it, go to a bench. That will also say no. Then they'll go to Supreme Court. This is this is a tamasha. This, this is these are <laughs> very bad way to say it, but these are the unflushables of Indian politics. Next one. 
Thought provocator wants to know, do you think Kerala could be tougher for BJP than Tamil Nadu? Yes. BJP has been getting 17% of the vote for a long time. But the Kerala society is so uh, fragmented that they are they are the real, you know, frogs in a um, uh, bhatti, which is being slow cooked from the bottom. They are not realizing how, how they are being slow cooked. And uh, I don't know, I hope it doesn't become too late. Already I hear that Hindus are only 48 or 47 percent now. So it's not good news. Next one, please. I think we are done with the questions. Uh, thank you so much for joining at such short notice. I have another episode of uh, uh, Aski Boski in Tamil in about 10 minutes. Those of you who are uh, speaking, uh, your speakers of Tamil, please do come and encourage us there. This is a continuation of an episode on Ilai Raja. Promises to be very, very fun, uh, fun-loving moment. Those of you who love music, you can come in and listen there. So I'll be coming back online very shortly. Thanks once again. Namaskar.